we've got a lot to unpack. I want to jump right in, but first I'm going to tell you, I'm going to set up chapters and timestamps so that you can look in the bottom of this video in, in, in case there are certain things you want to jump around to within the video, trying to make it a little bit more format friendly for the user, for the viewer, for you. Uh, I appreciate you coming here and checking out what I have to say. So let's get right in now. No delivery record for October. That I'm, call, I'm calling it now. Uh, I'm going to be looking for, and hopefully we will see a 10,000 plus delivery number for the month of October. Now we had talked about, and the hope was the, the optimistic side was going, all right, maybe we're going to see a new delivery, maybe uh, a delivery record of 13,000 or more vehicles delivered in October. But I have, a, and I've shared the screen and the, and the pictures from CNEV post and this came out from some of the users who have ordered the ET5s, and they have been told that they will not get some of their deliveries that were planned for October until November. We had also heard, and frankly, over the weekend, uh, my intent was to get this video out sooner. However, because of things continuing to develop and still trying to get some bits and pieces together and get better data on what was going on, I could tell there was more uh, happening with regard to shutdowns and lockdowns in China than uh, I was probably seeing or hearing about. And, and that was over the last week, actually, that I had seen in different parts of China where people were talking about this on social media. And so I was kind of like, all right, I, I, this doesn't this doesn't have that feel of we're going to get the full month uh, capacity ramped up. And so it's difficult to try and have, uh, you know, feel the pulse and the heartbeat on such an enormous country. China is so expansive and so massive. And so that was one of the things that kept me from getting this video out sooner. But I want to talk specifically about the issues and then we'll talk models and then we'll go from there. Um, the issues or concerns for some investors uh, will be and have been that they're not happy. They want management to convey more things, to communicate more things. And I knew from early on in 2020, when I first started digging into this company, one of the things that I took as a positive is the guy who runs the company. That's William Lee. I call him Mr. EQ because it was low key brilliance. I actually took it as a positive because I would rather the guy running the company focus on running the company and not have to handhold or hype or do that sort of thing for investors like myself. At the same time, I also have to recognize what that means potentially. And it could be more volatility for things like the stock price in the shorter term, especially as this company is not yet profitable. So at the same time, and in the meantime, I just kind of sit back and watch and observe what other investors have to say and, and sort of monitor uh, their frustration, the level of their frustration, things like, for example, this month's delivery number if we don't get that record, I don't think we'll get it. Will we get a 10,000 plus number? I have said before that 10,000 plus is sort of the new baseline that I expected and hope to see to finish out the end of this year, 2022. Now, why is that important? Last year, 2021, uh, they were supposed to have capacity to do that. Now, having capacity to do that and actually getting the delivery numbers in line, two different things as we are learning. But it was one of those things where I was kind of like, all right, this for me means we're at least a year out from where I'd hoped we'd be on the fundamental side. And so I've just kind of made that mental note and, and appropriately tried to sort of set up, okay, maybe that means I've got to wait a couple more years. I'm okay with it as long as the company is putting out these premium services and products that I believe they're putting out. And so at the same, you know, and on that same line, here's what we've got. Even with the demand sort of being in question from some retail investors, um, and, and it's kind of hard to argue that, I, I think it's difficult to challenge and say that the demand isn't there for NEO because NEO has come out with three new products, three new vehicles that they're just delivering in the last couple of quarters. And, and so the ET7 is one of those that started coming out at the end of March. We've already seen some uh, constraints and issues with that coming out and online. Again, a nod to if this is truly a premium brand company and the model needs a little bit more time to ramp so that they can hopefully meet demand of consumers and users, then that's what it is for me as an investor. Those are the, the things that I just kind of want to monitor. Then we had the ES7 or the EL7, depending on where it's going to be delivered. Uh, and that came out the end of August. Okay, so really, really 
incredible that this company is doing so many things and, and I'll, I'm going to highlight that in a second, come back to it. ET5 deliveries started the end of September. So now we've got the first two sedans to ever come out from this brand and this company, both happening in the year of 2022. We also have a new SUV. All three of these vehicles are on the NT 2.0 platform, uh, basically upgraded platform as this company grows. And, and the way I'm trying to make a comparison in my mind so that I can understand it uh, is sort of like as the smartphones develop and improve. That's kind of the way I'm looking at this. And what I'll be real curious about is if Neo later on does decide to discontinue models and bring out new models. Now, I have no expectation one way or the other, but I've seen some people talk about uh, and and sort of suggest that maybe Neo is going to discontinue models. And I don't know that they're going to do that. I haven't heard the company say they're going to do that. But it's interesting for me as I recognize this is a tech company. And if they want to adapt and continue to bring out new models, then will they discontinue or will they make upgrades to or bring up to the new platforms. This is really gonna be interesting to watch moving forward. Um, and then also, of course, recognizing that NEO has NEO certified and Yushin and the investments there so that NEO actually will continue to have an interest in the used vehicles down the road, even after they're not the original new vehicles being purchased and delivered. So they're already thinking way down the line with this. And that, is consistent with the view of the guy who runs the company, William Lee, Mr. EQ, as I call him. Now, let's talk because as far as the earnings, this was news that came out recently. Neo will be doing their earnings call on November 10th. This becomes a lot more uh, important for me because now that I'm not expecting a new delivery number for October, I want to know, okay, well, what's status? How are things progressing? Because again, let's just step back a few months and we've got the ET7, the ES7, and the ET5, all new deliveries this year. And that's a lot to be coming out with from the product line and, and standpoint. And then also to be trying to ramp at the same time with the new factory coming online. And oh yeah, let's not forget, they've also got, they're coming up on almost 1,200 battery swap stations that they're putting in, power swap stations around China. And they've got a new power swap battery swap station factory in Europe that is starting to crank them out over there. This company, and this is why in 2022, I had said it very clearly. I said this year in my mind is it's a pivotal year for Neo, but it's really a year of positioning. It's the company setting itself up for what I hope will follow in 2023. And that is, knock on wood, provided things go well, positioning themselves for massive growth cycle, specifically with things that are going to be more sexy, more attractive to investors like delivery numbers really ramping. And coincidentally, by the way, that's also going to be the thing that's going to put Neo really close to profitability. So as we see that ramp up, whenever that takes place, uh, it sort of makes the end of this year in 2022 very pivotal. Uh, and, and really, it's, a, it's an interesting time. I can't help get excited. And even though some might be frustrated, upset, unhappy about not getting a delivery record in October, for example, I'm more looking at this as, hey, you know, I'm recognizing they've done all this expansion. They're doing so many things right now. And they're trying to maintain a premium branding and service and product cycle that to an extent they're starting as they're rolling out with these new products. That is a big ask of a company. So rather than me getting frustrated about, oh, we're, you know, maybe we get 10,000 vehicles delivered in October versus 13, uh, to kind of look ahead and go, all right, what can they do by the end of December? Where are we sitting? Because again, to start that full year of 2023 with the big delivery number, especially let's say, for example, with the ET5 coming out of the new factory. And as we've seen here in the article share, that is one of the things that was held up. And so we're, we, we're going to see a little delay, but is it really on the manufacturing and the product, like production and delivery side, or is it just the delivery side because of lockdowns? And if those also shift change, or if they're able to better manage that heading into the end of the year, what will the December numbers look like? And so that's sort of the way I'm looking at this is I'm going to keep tracking things on a almost daily, weekly basis to the extent that I'm able 
but also it's more just for data purposes and to make sure the company is heading in the right direction. And the idea that they've come out with these three new models in the last months and they're ramping in so many different ways, all while trying to, and I believe they're legitimately putting out premium uh, services and products. I'm just not tripping if they don't get a new delivery record every single month. I do hope we see that baseline continue of the 10,000 plus number. And at some point, I do want to see that really ramp and, and see that number really have a nice uptick. But it's almost more for me at this point, looking at it from the standpoint of, all right, what will we see by the end of the year? And that's why that November 10th earnings call is going to be important. I want to hear whatever they have to say on the management side, uh, and, and they will address the issues, especially as they're talked about with ET5 and things like that. Uh, if they think, for example, they'll be able to get to the 10,000 plus number that they had previously talked about and hope to do by the end of this year, for example, in December, that alone could take them plus 10,000 of the other vehicles, obviously to a 20,000 plus delivery number. So, you know, knowing that that is basically around the corner, but not knowing when we're going to get around that corner is kind of the, the drama unfolding real time. So rather than fear monger about it, rather than get all worked up, which is not really my way in the first place, I thought it would be interesting to do this video in this way, this format also give people the chance to kind of work through it. And, and what are your thoughts? Uh, do you think, as I do, that it's more about kind of this last quarter of the year to see where, for example, December, set, uh, December delivery set up for NEO heading into 2023? I'm, I'm a little more focused on that because of what it could do. And especially as we still have things like the PCAOB, the auditing uh, body is over in China. Maybe they won't be done until close to the end of the year. Maybe we get news sooner and maybe that's a positive, not just for you know the companies that they're looking into like Alibaba uh, and Yum and JD, but also for other Chinese based companies that are listed in the US stock market. Tell me what you think. I covered a lot of stuff. I kind of went all over the place, but we, there, there is so much more going on than we can possibly keep up on our cover. I wanted to try to encapsulate as much as I could. Also, uh, again, I'll offer the, the chapters to make it a little easier to work through I'm looking forward to hearing from others and continuing, you know, the research just continues. It's all about study, improvement, uh, growth, and further development. I will never know enough. So I'm just going to keep studying. Uh, and sometimes, as was the case over the weekend, I didn't even get the video out that I hoped to get out. But part of it was I was still gathering data. And, and I have to step away from uh, getting in my own head and going, all right, there's just more I need to study first. And, and at some point, you know, sometimes I just need to drop a video or what you'll find me doing more of is going live randomly. That is something I plan to do more of. And so please subscribe if you haven't. Normally, I don't even think to ask, but subscribe to the channel and also click that notification button if you have not, because then when I do randomly impromptu go live at whatever point, we can have dialogue. I really appreciate and love this growing community we have. It's a global community. And sure, there are a lot of new investors here, but they're, you know, I'm a fan of souls and people and humanity, and I want people to win. And I don't care if somebody's not invested in Neo, if they're in other things. I'm I'm here to be positive and upbeat. I've been through a lot in life. I'm blessed to still be here and to be able to share just a little bit of my story. So come back and see me again. Shishi folks, have a great day.